I'd like to start with a question. What kind of relationships are there between gospel churches in your city or your region? Probably each of us could describe one of five different kinds of relationship. Number one, competition, where other churches are really just rivals. Two, coexistence. Uh, We know about other churches that are out there, but we don't have any relationship with them and we don't particularly much care. Three, communication. We're starting to build relationships and understanding. Maybe there's a prayer gathering within your city on occasions. We know each other just a little bit. Four, cooperation. We're starting to help each other, sharing ideas, sharing resources, maybe praying more intentionally for one another. Five, collaboration, where we work for the good of other churches. We're in it together, even though they may not be part of our network. And in this short presentation, I want to make the case for that kind of relationship between churches, collaboration, because if we want to reach our communities for Christ, we will need to work together in meaningful forms of gospel partnership. And churches in cities haven't been particularly good at that. Some of us remember things like Billy Graham events where churches might just be willing to put aside their differences for the sake of a greater cause, but it, but it doesn't come easily or instinctively. And the question is, why don't we do it more? Because I believe that there are things that we can attempt that are better done together than on our own. Let me just flip that question around, think about it this way. Is there in your city a problem or or a compelling cause, a need that actually calls you to work with others together in collaboration? And I believe our willingness to take gospel partnership to that fifth level, our willingness to collaborate will often grow as we gain a greater sense of gospel need. Now, these diagrams may help a little bit, I hope. Look, every healthy gospel church understands that there's a gospel need and a gospel opportunity. I've called that a box A vision, where members of the church are mobilised for mission around the local area to reach those who don't know Jesus. And some churches, though, reach a point where they recognise that they could go further and try to reach neighbouring communities. They start to develop a bigger vision, the box B vision, a vision for the neighbourhood, new communities, new people groups that might lead them to plant daughter churches, start new ministries in surrounding areas. I think a box B vision suggests that greater sense that we need to go out to those who don't or won't otherwise hear of Jesus. But if churches start to get a vision for their cities, well, I want to call that a box C vision kind of the the biggest vision that we can have, that you want to therefore work with other churches, networks and denominations, because you realise no one tribe can reach the city. So what if you had a burden to reach your city? What would it take? What would have to happen if we really wanted, for example, everyone in our town or city to have a chance to hear about Jesus in their lifetime, in a language that they can understand, and in a culturally appropriate way. I suggest to you that it would take nothing less than a movement of the gospel to reach a box C vision. Now, a movement isn't a formal organisation. Typically, it's not something you don't even necessarily join. A movement's an organic coming together, a collaboration of churches who choose to do it, maybe for a limited time or a focused purpose, energised by a shared gospel vision and the values needed to get you there. So movements are not really the meeting of church leaders for fellowship, nor the gatherings of congregations for mutual encouragement, good and beneficial as those might be, rather no gospel movements are goal-driven, mission-minded endeavours. And gospel movements centre around this shared vision, perhaps a vision for a city. Tim Keller writes, movements are marked by a compelling vision. 
And in my own city of Birmingham, where I've been living for the past 27 years, in the last 10 years, a group of evangelical churches from different networks and tribes have decided to come together under the name 2020 Birmingham. We've come together not to try to plant churches together, but rather together to plant healthier and a greater number of churches. We believe in the compelling vision for our city, that we need a church planting movement for the city of Birmingham. And maybe if we could see 20 new churches planted in 10 years, between 2010, when this whole thing began, and 2020, that would be a start. And then we thought of maybe another 30 churches between 2020 and 2030. And then what if those 50 new churches planted once in their own lifetime? That would be 100 new churches for our city. So what makes this kind of collaboration between churches, this level of partnership and generosity, what makes it work? I want to suggest that movements need to centre around a shared theological vision. Theological vision is the way you see your city and the church. It's what does it mean to be the church? What is it that we need to be and to do in our time and our place to see a, a movement of the gospel here? In our diagram, Church A and Church B maybe come from different denominations. They believe slightly different things, but they share a burden and a vision for their city, this theological vision. And they can begin to partner in various ministries together around that. So what might be a theological vision for a citywide collaborative church planting movement like 2020 Birmingham? Well, we use the following eight values. And essentially, we say to people who are interested in being a part of what we're about is if you get these values, if these things excite you, you'll find a home with us and want to be part of what we're doing. Number one, we love the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a faithfulness to the gospel. It's at the heart of everything. We want to honour Jesus. It's an evangelical gathering centred around the gospel. Two, we believe the gospel is the power, though, not only to save us, but to renew us in our lives. Gospel renewal is key to the transformation of individuals and, and even the renewal of our cities. Three, we care about the lost in our city. This is a movement centred on compassion. Our focus is the urgent task of reaching the lost. Four, we believe that planting is key to reaching the city. This is mission. We're convinced that the multiplication, therefore, of healthy gospel churches that are able to effectively reach their own communities is essential. Five, we know that we can do more together than we can do on our own. Partnership is our fifth value. When there's a box C vision, we know we need each other and we begin to depend upon each other. Six, we recognise and celebrate the fact that it takes different kinds of churches to reach the whole city, many different gospel churches to reach a diverse city. Seven, we have a citywide agenda and focus. This isn't a national or an international thing. Eight, we work to bring blessing to the city, holistic endeavours as well as church planting to bring blessing to our city. And it's this kind of DNA or theological vision typically that enables churches to put aside some of their differences in their style of worship or their models of planting, all sorts of secondary distinctives to unite in mission around the goal of doing more together than we can do on our own. So by focusing our partnership around shared theological vision rather than doctrine or methodology, we're able to encourage and foster the trust we need to give ourselves to the task and to be generous and inclusive as we can be. When it comes to asking who can be involved who can we work with? We say, rather than asking, do we believe exactly the same things, doctrine? Or do we share the same practices, methodology? We ask, do we share the same vision? So, three things are necessary 
for a healthy missional partnership. And if you were thinking about a gospel project around which you might work with others, how would you know it's the right time to collaborate? When does a good idea become realizable? Well, Bruno and Dirks in their book, Churches Partnering Together, suggest three questions to help us in this uh, assessment. Number one, is there a clear gospel opportunity? Is there something to come together for? Two, is there a clear gospel need? Can everyone see there's so much more that needs to be done here? And three, is there a shared congruity? Now that's more important than we might at first realise recognising that there's a shared understanding and acceptance of the commitment involved is really what lies at the heart of that third question. It doesn't mean every church plays an identical role when churches partner together, but do they have the same level of passion and commitment, even if they don't have the same money or other resources or leadership? When it comes to working together, you need to know what you're agreeing to do and for how long, and we wrote it into our name, Birmingham 2020. So what does collaboration look like? What is it you want to say to each other as leaders if you think about a project? What is it that we want to do and how are we going to get it done? In Birmingham, we decided we wanted there to be far more than a small number of churches who could maybe plant, but a more generous coalition that would accelerate and multiply church planting across our city. What does that mean in practice? What does it look like for us in Birmingham to not necessarily plant churches together, but to together plant churches? Well, in Birmingham, we work together in six different ways across our tribes and networks. One, we pray for each other. We've established a network of prayer for plants in the city. Two, we recruit, we wave a flag for the city of Birmingham and encourage planters to choose it whoever they'll end up planting with. Three, funding. We link plants with donors and partner churches from the UK and around the world. Four, we train together. We'll mention what those opportunities are in a moment. Five, we offer coaching, facilitating a coaching network that helps keep planters and their churches healthy. And finally, network development partnering with mission agencies and other organisations in the city to facilitate planters in their ministry. So here's the five ways in which we train within our city. We run City to City Incubator, a two-year church planter training developed in New York by Redeemer City to City and used around the world. Two, a planters forum where once a month planters gather to encourage one another, hear stories, celebrate successes, for peer-to-peer accountability training and advice. Three, Paracaleo, where planter spouses can gather and share in the journey together. Four, annual conferences where we serve the churches in the city that may not be church planting churches yet and we share stories about what God is doing. And five, Next Generation Leadership Development Programme, where we create a pipeline for planters by raising up potential leaders from the different churches in our city to train together new leaders for the city. So how might things look different if you worked in this way in your region or town or city? I think there's a bunch of things that we would see. Healthier churches planted, more churches, a greater number of churches planted, greater partnership and support from the outside as people see us working together for our city. For a change of culture in the churches in the cities, the people, churches work in a way they've never worked before. Five, the development of gospel ecosystems. Six, happier churches. Seven, God's blessing on gospel unity. Eight, reaching the unreached, the least reached people in our communities. Nine, resource sharing, strategy and information. Ten, finally, retention in the city. I think giving people a reason to stay for the bigger need and the bigger project that we're about in our city. So how do you develop a gospel movement for your city? Bruno and Dirks again write, kingdom partnerships require multiple churches that are equally committed. This is not the same as being equally involved. While we may have different tasks, 
We need to be in the battle together. So are there leaders, they ask, and churches who share the same burden as you to meet the need you've identified? Are they willing to invest time, energy and resources? Do they have a strong passion for this ministry or could it be that you're dragging them into partnership by sheer force of personality and persuasion? And we don't really want to go there. So questions to ask yourself. Do you have enough people with a common spirit within your city to come together? And do you share that theological vision, that DNA that's going to keep you together? Is there a strong desire for kingdom collaboration, mutual respect between you? And has that been evidenced in your relationship so far ahead of ever thinking about undertaking a project together? So do you listen well to one another? Do you defer to one another? Or do you, do you need to just spend more time really getting to know each other before you think about working together? And are you ready, each of you in this project, to count the cost of what it might mean to sacrifice and to serve other tribes and networks and to put their needs even at times ahead of your own? Why do I want you to consider a gospel partnership for your city? Well, we have a bigger vision, if we think about our city, that compels us to greater gospel partnership. And we have a vision that no one church, denomination or network could ever fulfill. It kind of, we, we have to do it if we're going to achieve our goal. And finally, we have a vision that believes that we can do far more together than we could ever do on our own. Thank you very much for listening. God is doing amazing things in our cities, in our countries. I've been privileged to be part of something in one city. But I've heard of many stories around Europe of churches that are beginning to understand the value of not merely communicating well as churches with one another or cooperating with one another, but actually collaborating out of a kingdom mindset with one another for the sake of the lost, for the sake of the city and for the sake of Jesus Christ.